getting all sassy because I'm overtired and high and caffeinated. I got a weird cocktail going on here. Can I just be hitting my pen as the show starts? How fruit yeah, sure, why not? Hate it's already started. started. Our posturings, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Bigger Picture Podcast. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, sacred geometry today. Which is a very broad topic. Yep. Um, so more specifically, the uh, yeah. platonic solids, the flower of life, and phi, as you saw in the, uh, in the title. Things we will not be talking about. <laughs> We'll be shooting lasers at planets. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, well, let's touch upon that real quick. You know, why not? Okay, so... Um, Go ahead. Real, real fast. We're setting up, and I'm, I'm looking for, you know, the articles that Sean's read so we can, you know, do today's show. And I see this one from Forbes magazine. And it said, the title is, Is Humanity About to Accidentally Declare Interstellar War on Alien Civilizations? And I go, Sean... What the fuck are you reading? And he said, oh, I, oh, I, I, yeah, I saw that, but I haven't actually read it yet. So I read through it, and essentially it's saying how space travel has come to, like, these uh, boundaries where lasers are have, have, like, started to prove that in many ways they're more effective in getting somewhere faster than your average space rocket because we only live so long. And yeah, because so in a far, in a vacuum you don't have yeah. yeah you don't lose uh, or refract the light so you can concentrate it on a much narrower space with more energy. Yes. So like something like a yeah. like a solar sail or like a laser yeah. sail. So so the, exactly. So yeah. you want to take a laser a solar sail rather, and shoot this laser at it so that it, it, it essentially pushes it through space like fast. I think it said like it would get to eventually about ten uh, percent, about ten percent the speed of light. Of light. Speed, yeah, which, which is, is very fucking fast. fast. <laughs> uh, it'd be the, well, it'd be the fastest man-made object ever. Yes, but the problems are. Um, one of the problems said something like there's all kinds of particles in space, and you could like do something that that was the less of the worried one that has was far less to do about the alien civilizations. Yeah. So. There's no guarantee that you're not going to hit something, like, pointing this. Yeah, yes, you can. we can see so far, or from math and, like, our instruments and all that stuff, we know, like, okay, if we project it this way, the tra- it's not going to get in the trajectory of this, 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 but we don't know what else is out there. Right, and so, it, it'd be hard to calculate when you turn on for the yes. first time the rate of acceleration. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you can't test it's that on all, Earth. It's all... It would be all high risk. It's extremely um, high risk. But Shoot let's missiles. say even if you get it out of the solar system, it's going, it goes, what if you, what if it hits something? If it's going 10% the speed of light and it hits something into like a planet, what if there's someone, what if there's a race there? What if there's something there? Somebody should calculate it. Like whatever 10% the speed of light is with a mass of like, what would a lightweight satellite in a, solar sail way like i don't know it's probably just, i mean in space it's gonna it's gotta be, be pretty robust different. but to go long distance maybe 50 pounds right 50 to 100 pounds probably made of carbon fiber and but various also, light materials depending on the planet that it <clears throat> oh let's say let's say it's an earth let's say it's one of our different. um it could be it could weigh way more there because of gravity well it's it's going to be the um the mass times acceleration Okay. For for the the force, I'm 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 ca- trying to calculate the force of the impact, because it doesn't matter. At that point, the, the gravity is going to surpass the gravity's pull as okay. it's, it's shooting. Right. You know what? Before we keep going on this too much, 
this wasn't quick at all. I apologize. <laughs> no, well, we're what, like four minutes into this. Not but. a good idea, guys. But it was, let's it was, just not shoot a laser into into space and be like, yeah, let's just. Shoot but somebody it that needs way. to do that calculation. Maybe yeah, I'll do it. No, on let, the fly, let's not but. do that. I, we we can think of something else. <laughs> but would it be? I don't know. Would it be planet destroying? What? It wouldn't. No, I don't think it would be planet destroying, but it would be damaging for sure. And again, if there's a civilization out there that we've been looking for. And so curious about all this time, and we just like, it's like, boom! Yo, sorry about that school bus we just blew up, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, no. uh, not a good way to yeah, introduce that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> Hello, neighbor, smash. Yeah. All right, well. <laughs> but anyway, uh, back in back to more interesting things. <laughs> yeah, sacred geometry. Um, put together a little slideshow. Look at this, we're getting a little bit more professional. Um, on this program here we have slides so uh, I'm just gonna go through a couple slides and kind of explain what sacred geometry is in the sense of like how it is and how we know what it is and kind of how it's used more general sacred. knowledge so that yeah. we can get into the more specific not, stuff yeah there's, there's not too much specific I'm not gonna be doing exact kind of one-to-one deals on each one of these we're gonna kind of briefly go over it just so for time purposes um, so <clears throat> let's move on. So platonic solids are pretty much, um, any shape that has a similar face with all the angles connected to each other, um, that has a similar angle. So meaning you have to have a, let's say a shape of a square. So the shape of a square has to be the same on all sides, but every side has to have a connecting angle to it. That connecting angle has to be the same throughout the entire cube to make it in 3d dimension. So if you look on the next slide here, you can see these are the platonic solids where every, um, every shape has a surface um, similar to the other surface and the angles are all the same. So for a cube in the middle here, you have the green one, all the shapes in the middle, um, all the shapes on the faces are squares, perfect squares, yet all the angles are 90 degrees no matter where you measure it. So that would be the same for all the other shapes that you see here. So the ones that even have the, the pentagons or the triangles, every pentagon, every triangle, and those ones are exactly the same measured with the exact same angles. <clears throat> so one thing I want to note here, though, and this is where it kind of gets kind of interesting, and we're, we're going to touch upon this a little bit later on, but you'll, you'll see some of these shapes, and then you, we're going to start seeing the intersection of some of these shapes to create new shapes. And I want you to notice on this particular um, diagram that I have here that you, you'll see some of them are actually labeled with kind of like elements. So like, like the fire, air, earth, water, and ether. Um, that has more to do when you start kind of thinking of it more outside the, the realm of just plain old like physics or in just the terms of actual geometry itself. So there is a little bit more to it. And then I think that's more of the, the sacred part of it. Real quick, yep. do any of those shapes represent a general shape of how the molecules of those elements might be formed? It roughly does, yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, and we're, we're, we, we will kind of touch upon some of that. Cool. Um, the other thing that you would notice, too, is technically um, there is no sphere here. So a sphere doesn't actually qualify for a platonic solid, but it is a solid nonetheless that is part of the sacred geometry, and that will be introduced pretty much later on too so that's just not included in this particular diagram so <clears throat> with all these shapes so every shape that is was represented on the 3d model on the previous slide you can see here on a 2d um the upper right hand corner was the cube and you can actually notice if you take that and kind of look around the the diagram here you can see how every shape intersects itself within the cube everything is contained within itself and every point, so every angle point that is on every other shape actually touches the cube. So there's, there's, it always will touch a surface that's never within, uh, there's no plane on plane. It's always point on plane. So, so obviously, cool. yeah, you can see, you know, the three sided. Then this would be what, like a seven, uh, seven eight sided? This 20 sided, I think. 20 sided, yeah, it goes all, yeah. It's it's a, it's essentially like all of the dies that you would have in like a dungeons game, and like dragons. Dungeons yeah, and yeah, dragons yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. 
Like all those shapes are what the shapes for sacred geometry are. Like, <laughs> so maybe that's why like all like the uh, Dungeon and Dragon nerds always are like the ones that know about this stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of alchemy, like, back yeah, in, like, the medieval that days, is true. involved, like, geometry, and, like, that's in, why that's why sigils and, like, glyphs are, you know, very geometric and stuff like that. Kind of that, cool. That is kind of cool. I never actually cool. thought about that, yeah. This, oh, yeah, the, dude, this is, this is all I think about. The you lore. Think about, you think of the more technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. But I think, That's wow. crazy. The lore of, like, old-school alchemy-inspired the game because that's the lore that they're trying to go for which is technically what we're talking about here yeah which then gets into magic yeah and you know i mean that is essentially do what this all is do you magic. think do you think there were real wizards <laughs> what you think there were real wizards i think that wizards were <laughs> misunderstood back in the day for something that we understand a little more now like the like let, let's say before Prometheus and, you know, the man knew about fire, a wizard knew about fire but didn't share that knowledge with someone. Right. Didn't know it anyone. Yeah. Guy comes in, you know, to, at night, wizard lights a match. That's it. <laughs> Guy isn't going to go, what's in your hand that's on yeah. fire. Fire. He's just you made go, fire oh in your hand. Oh, my God, there's fire in your hand. <laughs> this is why I want a time machine. I want to go back. Yeah, and that's it. Exactly, Match. like I, a lot of stuff you got to understand, are just because of a lack of knowledge that we now have today. Yeah. So, yeah, I think wizards were real. I also think dragons were real, but they might not have been exactly Serpent. what we look at them in Enki. books and movies. Enki. You know, <laughs> the fish guy, right? Yeah, the fish guy. Fish guy. Anka. Dragon guy, serpent guy, snake guy, insect guy. We got all kinds of some guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got a thing. We got a guy. <laughs> All right, but are we back to Metron's cube? Yeah, Metron's we sure can. Nice. So, okay. do you want to you want to talk about this? Um, kind of. <laughs> I, I would, yeah. Anyway, so Metatron's cube is. So you have um, the seed of life. Actually, can we do that first? Should we Should we do that first? Because that jump, leads up slide? to kind of. Metron, Metatron's cube because Metatron's cube is the larger of all of that, right? It contains everything. Yeah. yeah. So, well, with with the Metatron's cube, you have um, it's made up of spheres and and essentially lines or planes, where the spheres are more feminine energy, where the lines or the planes would be more masculine. So, you think more kind of round yeah, is and, yeah female yeah. and and hard. if you think about it, that that's pretty accurate. Men yeah. are very, much more like like. Like, rigid yeah like straightforward thinking you know but what uh metatron's cube kind of represents is the um the weaving and the intersection of both um forces right but as we're about to show you okay here we go here we go okay so it starts with a seed of life which is just circles right? yep just circles so just the female energy yep and for a while it is just circles yeah, because you can't. As we as we progress up the life tree, I guess if you want to call it that, because um, it starts with the seed of life, which is how many circles? Nine. Nine, I think. Yep. Nine. Ha, the there's nine. that number again. Always the number nine. Freaking you want you want to know something kind of fascinating that I I stumbled I upon? I, want, I always want fascinating news. Um, it's I wouldn't say it's news, but information. In, new information to me. Um, Tesla, obsessed with the number three. Or any number divisible by nine, and it was part. Remember how he was working on like that famous project where he was trying to pull free energy out of like the ionosphere or something yep. like that. Um, his designs, everything was based on uh, the number nine, and it's pretty much he said that it's he whatever device he made, everything in it or everything built around it was divisible by three in the form of nine, and he said that the key to the free energy is the number nine. Guys, if you, get, if you get some time, this is not what today's podcast is about, but look up some videos or some podcasts about the number nine. Just it's like it's Google, interesting, yeah. Google it's, it, trust us. Like, <clears throat> it's fascinating. It is fascinating. And I'm not really one to get too much into numerology because, like, when you start focusing on one thing, you see right. it everywhere. It's just right. how we are. We're built to see but patterns that we're thinking about. particular. Like, the but, angles of, like... Well, because nine goes 
so large, like meaning like nine isn't everything from, you know, a human cell to, you know, something like, you know, the seed of life, like, it's the start everywhere. of cells so anyway, up to like galaxies, you know? Back Backtracking. Weed. Uh, seed of Actually, life, nine circles. Then you progress up to the flower of life, which is a compilation of many, many circles that, um, which is the, uh, wait, is it on the? Yeah, it's the center one. Right, but are they, can they see that right yep. now? Uh, oh, oh, my bad. That's no. the B2. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so the top middle one, that's the flower of life. We move on to the tree of, the fruit of life, which kind of like, looks like a snowflake almost. Mm -hmm. Not coincidence. <clears throat> move on to the egg of life, it starts to look like a molecule slash cell, the tree of life, which forms that pattern, uh, which... That, that pattern itself is yeah. the tree of life. Which also introduces uh, male energy. Yes, with the, have, yeah, which the then introduces... Lines. Yeah, because it has the straight lines. And lastly, all of those things kind of exist within Metatron's cube. Yeah. And so that's why I wanted to bring that up first. One, but, one thing to remember here, too, is with, with these images like this, it, these are 2D representations of 3D... Yes, yes. ...geometry. So, well, except for maybe the exception of the Metatron's cube, which is kind of drawn in an isometric, where it has, you could, they, they use bold lines to kind of make it look a little bit more 3D-ish. Right, and, and I mean, <clears throat> they do a good job of, like, like even the egg of life, like, if you look at it the right way, it looks Yeah, that has 3D, a 3D representation you know I mean? to it as well, yep. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, moving forward. 3D uh, with spheres, yeah. So on the same slide, it says all life from planet cells follow the pattern of sacred geometry, add up the molecules, lattice structures fits in these perf these patterns when in crystal form. And yeah, so a couple molecules. what's interesting about like crystal form or like, like crystalline is they will form only in the platonic shapes. But they always do. There's no exception. So like the I included the uh, the ice water steam because you can see you know water and steam the molecules aren't in, in any Separated, particular yeah. pattern yeah but when you look at ice it is a very distinct pattern but what you notice about it is it looks like a snowflake right yeah. so take that snowflake and or take the shape of that and then you make um, the snowflake and you start tracing around with the sacred geometry right <clears throat> so again the molecule itself was the shape of a snowflake so the single molecule of ice has the same shape as ice and so the snowflake like as you see like the uh, metatron's cube kind of fits perfectly over it or 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 it fits perfectly over metatron's cube um so would this be a good time to introduce fractals? Because I feel like that snowflake. Oh, that would be later on. Is oh, look at it, dude. <laughs> look at it. Okay. Yeah, later. I know exactly what you're talking about. Later. But yeah, this is just more for the shapes here, and I want to go back up one more slide and uh, just talking about like the when they crystallize, like any, when any atom crystallizes, it will form into the platonic shape. So like even if like like the cool thing about actual crystals itself, like you know you dig them out of the earth and you take them when you actually look at them you know how like a lot of them actually have like like designs almost like kind of carved into them like the um you know some of them are like cubes almost look like like um like magnetic cubes kind of stacked together so they actually form yeah. like that in nature but when you crack them open and break them open they always break on a certain plane and that's like the plane of like like the fractal so it's like you can get these beautiful designs just from cracking open some crystals This is such a broad topic. Every time we do this, a broad topic like this, we start talking about it on the show, and I think of something that is relevant, kind of. Yeah, lay it out, kind though. of. Uh, just the energy of crystals, man. Like, and how certain crystals retain certain energies. Well, well. that's and that's and, and that's kind of where crystal. this. Yeah. Yeah, this is kind of where all this sacred geometry, the sacred part of the geometry, comes apart, right? Is yeah, like you said, where crystals are. The, they have energy, and there's actually a few researchers that believe that crystals can actually contain information, like actual information, um, meaning like some conscious being can actually send information into it and hold it almost like a USB drive, and then you have Dude. to 
find a frequency to get it back. I immediately think of that cave that's in South America that's just like a gigantic cavern of giant crystals. Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Imagine if that's just like all the secrets of the universe right there. Could be. Could be locked away in it. We just don't know. Because when you have a crystalline um, structure, it's it's so um, well defined that you can, like technically if you were to store information in it, you can, oh, excuse me. you can do it on a consistent basis. So, well, think about this. Silicon, what we use for computers, right? We use that for making motherboards and things like that. Um, that's crystal. Right? So we're already kind of doing it anyway. Maybe that's the next step. Crystal computers. I think they have that, though, don't they? They have that. They must have that. They fucking have everything now. Yeah, they have it. We don't, though. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. They have it. Um, All right, so moving on. We got the flower of life here, and this is kind of where you were talking a little bit upon the uh, kind of the flower of life and the fruit of life kind of fitting within it and you can see here too like if you kind of squint a little bit and you actually look at the the picture of the flower of life the one on the left you can almost see how this the, the actual cube is formed too if you if oh, you look absolutely. at yeah you can look at what like almost yeah, the faces can. because okay that very center circle yep that's the top corner top bottom corner if if the if the cube is slanted almost like in a diamond fashion. Yes. Yeah. That's the top bottom corner, and now the one right below it is the bottom. Center corner. Is the bottom center? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just you could you could draw easy right right there where the cube is. Yep. And <clears throat> what's cool about that is like obviously we're looking at a two D image, but you can start like after you start kind of looking and researching the the uh, platonics, you start seeing them in patterns. And then when you start seeing them in patterns, you start becoming amazed of how much stuff is actually out there. And um, this is, this. Uh, the more we talk about it, it's kind of like unearthing old thoughts that I would, that I was, uh, you know, coming up with when I first read that Bob Frizzle book yeah. that introduced me to sacred geometry. Yeah. So like, and that was a perfect example. We were just trying to like point out the cube within the flower of life. That was just the circles. It was just circles. Yeah, just circles in that fashion. Now, if you take that, and we're, again, we're looking at it in a two D representation, yep. but it's three D. If you take that and start moving it, it's still just circles, but that cube is still there at any point. So really, the circles create the. The female energy essentially creates the male energy. Yep. Like so, the female energy is the basis of it all. Yeah, it's it's the beginning. Which is kind of cool and profound. Which is and similar to stories that we've told before. Like on the last episode, we were talking about Sophia and the uh, the demiurge. Sophia being the female energy, the demiurge being a male energy. Once Sophia created stuff, the demiurge came from that. And then he started creating which everything fits within the cube, right? So, interesting almost, stories, almost, right? Almost also makes me think about the like suppression of knowledge, female. yeah, of everything really. Female too, but, like, but that's the mentality of the eagle. It's the mentality of Enlil, right? It's, it's what we've been discussing all along. And the funny thing is, technically, the next slide is this image here, and this image is the flower of life, which is located. At the Temple of Osiris. In Egypt. Egypt, yep. But who's Osiris? The god of death, wasn't well, it? Well, what other god, though? Because he oh. Osiris was also Enki. Enki, yeah. Or? Or Thoth, right? Thoth, or fucking... Or Hermes, or yep. many of the other guys, yep. right? And this particular inscription here was actually dated to about 12,000... Um, I think it was 12,000 B.C. Or, no, 10,500 B.C. That's what it was. 10,500 B.C. or 12,000 years ago. Now, first of all, that's how old that is. Yep. That's profound as fucking hell. I don't give a damn about my swearing. We swear all the time, whatever. But also, look how fucking perfect it is. Well, yeah, because it was important to them. Right, but like... 
that long ago to make that that perfect in stone. Yeah, in stone. Yeah, it is stand. It is sandstone, but it's still fucking stone. <laughs> Because I, I, well, I can't imagine 10,000 years ago, right? What did they had? Bronze? Bronze tools? Was it bronze? I don't even know if they even had bronze back then. I don't know. Because I, I don't know my ages for and it, metals. Yeah, but yes. But it was around there. Or you, it might have even just been like copper, straight copper. Even, even, even still, even if they had steel, you know what I mean? Like we have now. Yeah, that you're right. It is. Look at that. So, like, it's precise. It's you know what? It's I challenge anyone to draw that by hand with a pen and paper. Yeah. Right. A smooth, without, the, the smoothest pen you can find. Without a compass. With, without a, uh, you know, like. They had to no. Well, I would say whoever made this had to measure that too. Because that's that's too yeah. You're well, right. It's too perfect. Like they must yeah, have just of centered they had the point. To measure it. Yeah. But how did they the etch it into the stone so precisely? Like I bet you, I bet you all. Well, it's only circles. Depths. It's all circles, so you technically. Yeah, yeah, but but I mean, like 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 the actual work to do it like that. Yeah. Is um the precision is like almost like laser, dude. You know, what? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna find a stone and I'm gonna put that in it. Because think about it. Now that I'm thinking about it. If you took a center point and you had a string, right? You measured out the string to whatever length it needs to be, and you just keep going around, keep going around, 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 and carving that rock in the same spot every single time it's going to be perfect every single time that's true then just do the one over and the next one over next one over actually now that i'm thinking about it it might not be that hard but i still don't think that you would be able to make it like perfectly the same like depth you know what i mean like because that that looks like well we don't yeah it does look pretty uniform yeah but and granted it's so old that it's it's worn and it since has but being that old it still looks and, exactly yeah. how it's supposed to look and I'll throw it back up on the screen that's still amazing man <laughs> and even even if they thought well what if I just like put something in the center put a piece of string or vine or whatever they use at the time with a rock on the other end just keep putting it around it'll make a perfect circle yeah. even if that was the way they did that 12,000 years ago, more, like, that's still incredible that they thought of that that long ago. That doesn't, to me, say they were Neanderthals or, like, they weren't as smart as us. Right. Well, putting it this way, how many how many kids go through the, you know, the U.S. education system and have ever seen this shit before? Probably no one. <laughs> Unless you're going out and, and, and seeing it. But these shapes are part of that. like you They're find profound. them everywhere like you find them in you know egypt you find them in south america china india like these are in you know multiple temples or in you know old cities inscribed around like the 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 thought of the you know the flower of life is universal so like when you start thinking about it it's like how do we not know that today and like you said it's the suppression of knowledge somehow which we're trying to <laughs> combat, trying I guess. To, trying to cure it. Yeah, trying to we're cure tr it. We're trying to give you guys some knowledge, like make you think about some stuff that's like bigger than this, you know? The bigger picture. The bigger picture. You want some knowledge? I'll drop some knowledge. What about some phi? What? What, dude? <laughs> that's like the God of War symbol, isn't it? <laughs> the God of War. Oh God! I think there's the uh, U.S. education system. Yeah, I seen that, <laughs> I seen that symbol before. <laughs> While I'm bashing the skulls of my enemies. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, great game. Anyway. Fucking, that is an awesome game. But no, Phi. I'm the, gonna leave this one to you. Dude. Technically, it is a, it, it is a Greek symbol, and God of War is based around Greek mythology. Mm -hmm. For all you uh, game nerds out there, you know that. But uh, no, Phi. Phi is. Um, or the ratio of phi is the, or the golden ratio, or the golden mean, or however you want to say it. Uh, 1.618 is generally where we go, but you can see right on the screen it goes on to that length and infinity. It, there is no, and it's a irrational. Ira yeah, it's very irrational. So phi. What's important about phi? Well. Actually, let's go. What is phi, right? So phi is the relation of the whole. So 
it's a geometric construction where the mean of two parts, so if you look at the diagram here, B and C is equal to the whole, which is A, or in the ratio of 1 to uh, one, uh, one six point one eight. So you have to take the ratio of it um, as the whole, but what you can do is, like, you can take, let's say, figure B, you can still take five of that, and you can keep going down to smaller pieces, or you can keep increasing it and increase a piece to A and then keep going up. So it becomes infinite both ways. So the cool thing about five, five takes, dictates our natural world. And you can see just images or even just everything around us pretty much that is natural has a phi. Has a phi. What are you, what are you doing? Are you raising your hand? <laughs> from what was it? From, from here to here and then here to here? Yeah, and then all your fingers. Look, look how your fingers are. Look at, look at your fingertip, right? And then look between the knuckles. Yeah. If you were to measure it out, it'd be close to phi. And, and everything cool in stuff. nature is like that, yeah. So, in even like, you know, from something as small as like a butterfly to something as large as a planet. You gotta put it back on screen for them. Oh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. You know, it's, it's everywhere. So, like, here's a good example of a... a spiral right so in the first image here on the left you have sunflower seeds right and if you start so center really point there visual representation yep um if you start a center there you can kind of see uh multiple spirals coming out kind of in the similar format of that bottom right picture in that in that collage it's there like an aloe plant or something. yep and then if you notice obviously it can scale up it can go to the size of like a hurricane or a storm all the way up a to galaxy. a galaxy, which is crazy, right? Which you have right there, mm -hmm. which also has a Fibonacci spiral in it, yeah. which is phi, essentially. It is as close to phi as we can get, yeah. And then just look at ourselves. So you just literally look in a mirror, and your entire face is built with this formula of phi. Of course it is, which is exactly why or how, like graphics exist in our games like, yeah that's you just it's like the polygons yeah, yeah you, make, you make the angles to create a face and if you look at graphics nowadays i mean all those angles remember like like virtual fighter oh you know i love I mean? virtual fighter like, yeah ding, 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 like box yeah. heads and now it, it's so smooth it looks like real people like, well that's the cool thing about um, geometry bam it really no that's actually a great point because when you take a, a platonic, right, a platonic um, solid, yep. and you truncate it, meaning you start to cut the corners at the all same angles, right, and you keep doing it, you will actually, it creates, and again, we're going to get the fractals eventually, but it creates kind of an infinite way to do it, but it, it eventually kind of smooths it out, right? It becomes a circle? Yeah, and becomes, or as close to a cir as, as, as sphere as it could be if you keep going down, but eventually if you keep cutting angles into it, it will turn back into whatever shape you started with. But thinking about video games, like you said, the heads were, you know, very angular and had these weird shapes kind of similar to the mask. Um, this is called like a Fibonacci mask or whatever. Similar to that, if you would imagine that being the actual bone structure of this woman. But what, if you actually think about it, if you start truncating those graphics, right, you keep cutting the corners off and try to smooth it out, you have graphics like we are today, right, where everything is smooth, but it's still the same polygonal system hasn't yeah. changed. So literally we're in a simulation, right? We're just a really good one. Which is kind of, yeah, yeah, which is like what I thought originally when I first got into this stuff. Like I started thinking about <laughs> matrix and how everything's numbers and and technically everything is numbers. Like everything is an angle or it's geometry. Like, right. And even the most chaotic of patterns, like if taken the time, if you like, if you took the time to sit and like dissect it geometrically and like figure it out, like it would be sound. You yeah, know what I mean, yeah. like nothing is chaotic within like. Oh God, it's just. So like, yeah, it's. I guess let's let's stick with this analogy a little bit here with the video game stuff. So if the platonic solids are the polygons, um, phi is the code, the instruction. Right, so how do we even like build? Like, I, I wonder if there, there's got to be a game or something like that that might be built on like Fire, the Fibonacci sequence. I'm sure there is. Right, I know the songs. Like, I know Tool has um, 
lateralis or something like that, that it's in the Phi, or it's in the Fibonacci sequence, which uh, on screen right now we can see um, how we get to this, but like you have, so Fibonacci sequence, you take, you start with zero, right, which would be, I guess the starting point of everything is a singularity, right? Um, and then you add the next number to it, so zero plus one equals one. And then you take the answer of that formula and then the previous number that you added to it, so one plus one would equal two. So you so take the, so the answer, so like one, one plus, plus two equals three, three and two then plus three equals five, yeah. so your Fibonacci sequence, you know, ends up being zero, one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, and so forth. And when you start plotting that on a graph, so in this slide right here, so you can see on the left hand side, you can see um, the columns are one through twenty five, the Fibonacci terms. So that's that's what I was talking about, the one, one, two, three, five, eight, thirteen, twenty one, thirty four, fifty five. So that's adding the previous number to the result that you got, to the sum that you got. And then when you start plotting on a graph, you actually start noticing where the, right where the 1.6 is, it starts to level off. So you have zero way down at the bottom. Um, you're going to have your ones, your twos, right? And then eventually it's going to even out. And the higher you go up the Fibonacci sequence, the closer you get to phi. But you never actually get there. So it'll actually go from... A little bit over, a little bit under, a little bit over, a little bit under, and it kind of bounces almost in a frequency. But you can never touch phi. So, like, it's an interesting thing. In, in Fibonacci was a, um, I think it was a monk, right? Or not a monk or, like, a clergyman or whatever. And I think it was something like that. I, mean, I don't know if it was a monk, but I think you're in the right ballpark. Yeah, it's something like that. I, I don't actually know what he was, but... He actually just stumbled upon this just by by accident, just by curious, like, oh, what happens if you do this? And then he started plotting it out. And then he, yeah, and then he started noticing that it can just keep going on forever. If, if I can interject here real quick, before we get too much more into it, uh, the curious thing that you just mentioned, like, he was just curious about it. Like, I encourage everyone who's listening or watching this, like, just mess around, like, Get, get a ruler, a protractor, or whatever, and, like, just try, like, making shapes that are, like, geometric with each other and keep going, and you'll you'll create shapes. You'll create cool things. Yeah. And another cool thing is, like, that equation, the like, that showed out, you know, 0 plus 1 is 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2, and then two plus 1 plus 2 is 3, and it keeps going 2, 3, 5, 8. If you were to take one of those old... You know, we use them in, like, middle school, like, early high school in math class. Charts that is, like, graphed with, yeah, the, yeah. with the crosshairs. And, the, you know, one is after the, the center, which is zero. And it goes out, like, both, like, north, south, east, west, essentially. Yeah. Um, if you were to take that and then, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise, take the answers of each and just go, like, make a dot over on two. And then on the, the, the line that's going, pointing north put a dot on three and then point a line that's going on you know pointing east five that's keep saying. going yeah, it'll spiral and keep out. pointing the dots and connect those with a, with like a, a compass like put the compass yeah, point yep. at zero and start on one well you would make something like that sunflower pattern y yeah and, and you'll see that Fibonacci sequence and it's just it's and I'm, I'm only encouraging people to do that is because when you see it but from something that you create yourself, like it's yeah, it's it, cool. It it's different. To you yeah. in a different way. When than, was the first time you were introduced to the golden ratio or phi or any of this or Fibonacci? Um, the Fibonacci sequence, I, dude, that that Bob Frizzle book introduced me to the deeper parts of like a lot of this stuff. Like, and sacred geometry was probably my favorite part of that whole book. Because I, I found it's just so profound. Right. Um, but that sacred geometry, uh, the Fibonacci sequence was also in that book. Yeah, it was. It was hard not to relate it. So you, like, yeah, I learned about it there. It's as close it, as we can get on a simple format to understand. Yeah. Because it's it's like anyone can do it. Like people can add one plus one. Right. right? Exactly. You can do it right in your head. You can go. You know. And again, I wish I had a, a visual few represent, over. representation of what those old charts that you used in. No, I know what you're talking charts, about. Yeah, you know, 
had like the solid, the most solid lines at zero. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there were all the, there were like like lighter lines, and if you just do that, and like you'll create all, you could do anything. You can do anything. Connect it. Oh my god. Yeah, I I remember there was a documentary on like I think it might have been like Discovery Channel. It was one of those channels, TLC, back when like the Learning Channel was actually about learning and not like stupid reality shows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, God, I don't know what happened. But like, have you watched TLC lately? Yeah, the late nineties happened. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The dumbing um, of America. No, I don't. I don't really watch. But uh, it was on one of those channels because that's what my TV was always on. Because I was always fascinated by this stuff, and I remember watching it at a, at a fairly young age, and it, I didn't understand it at first. Not until I actually, like you said, until you started kind of drawing it out. And I remember going to like school. Like I must have been maybe like. 10 so i would have been like fourth grade so it sounds about right i remember drawing on like the back of like my assignments and stuff i would just draw in try to make the, the right proportions meaning the, the 1.618 and draw like just patterns like you said just kind of draw a line here and then draw the next line here and the next line there and the next thing you know i'm making these like like kind of like a polygonal figure or shape and it actually looks really cool and and after that, I started seeing the world a little bit different, meaning, like, when you just walk outside and you just, like, I, I asked you this question earlier today, like, have you ever just gotten so high and just lay down at a tree and just look straight up at the leaves? And, and what like do you see? You notice all the patterns. Yeah. yeah. Cause you, well, what's cool about it is you see the way the branches go off in different directions, right? So they go off in a, in a, essentially a spiral, right? The Fibonacci sequence spiral. So the, the five spiral there. But then the distance between the nodes of the branches on the small branches on the large branches is also in that same phi ratio. But then the nodes of the leaves on those small branches are in the phi ratio. And then the actual leaf itself, like meaning, you know, like, like an oak or like a maple leaf has what, the five points? Mm -hmm. I bet you if you were to measure each point, they're probably in a phi ratio to each other. Probably. Right? And then every probably little nook and cranny you see in. A leaf is probably in the phi ratio, and you've probably zoomed into the cell structure of a leaf. It's probably in the phi ratio. Like it goes like deep. Yeah, like literally everything within nature is could be broken down to have the phi ratio and its geometric patterns within it, just like video games. Again, everything, everything. Yep, and everything, and the same for the platonic solids. And yeah. this is, and this is what makes it like. The, the, the problem with sacred geometry is the damn word sacred, right? Because as soon as you have sacred in there, then it, yeah, it becomes woo, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? So if it was just but called like, it like base like, geometry or like basis geometry. Like it's or, sacred not on just or because of a religious level, because of like it's a, it it's, is yes. level. Like, yes. like this is sacred to everyone and everything. It doesn't matter. It's not about belief or religion. Like, it's about what is. Like, yeah, and, like, for the examples we went through with, like, the human cells and, and how the growth... Like, did we skip that slide, actually? I don't even we remember. Might have, we might have. Let me see if I can go back to it. Ah, yeah, there it we is. Did, we did, we did. We but definitely... Look, check this out. Check this out. We definitely skipped this. I don't know why. Go ahead, take the reins. Go. All right, so... And, it, and this is kind of what we're talking about where... Like it's it's everything. Like you look at the this the chart on the on the the image on the right here. You can see the cells right in the in the drawings that relate to it. So as just the female egg, right? Just just the the egg that's in the woman circle, right? Or sphere, mm -hmm. right? Introduce. Then, then you have the sketch of it. Then you yep. have the actual picture. Yep, actual picture is identical, right? Then you have the introduction of the sperm. Obviously, we have reproduction now. Splitting of the cells. Now you have two. And then it multiplies to four, and then multiplies to more, and it keeps keeps going, going, and going, going. But it it follows the same pattern as everything in the universe. Is it a coincidence? Nah. <laughs> is it instructions? No such thing as coincidence, guys. No such thing. Um, isn't DNA also in the uh, phi the, ratio? The, yeah. Is that true? Uh, as I'm thinking about it, um, yeah, you research that. But so I'll I'll talk a little bit on this too. Um, so, like like I was saying before, when you're looking up at a tree and you can see the patterns, like you don't necessarily have to measure it exactly. Once you start seeing the 
the the, the ratio in your head and in seeing the the perfect kind of that little spot that you can you can actually spot it with the naked eye and it doesn't have to be um exact you know you're not looking for the exact 1.618 it might be right. 1.620 right it might yeah, be yeah, yeah. A, just a hair off but you're still going to be able to see it with the naked eye in even like something like a leaf like even if you found the leaf that fell on the ground pick it up take a look at it take a look at the how the tips are formed take a look at how the veins are formed like in relation to the direction they go in the space between them the length of the actual vein itself like it's pretty amazing that you can literally just walk out of your house or your apartment or wherever and find it anywhere in nature and actually i remember seeing this this article that they were trying to measure forests so there would be a forest of um, trees. So they measured a tree, right? They had one specific tree as a starting point. They measured the entire tree, and they mapped the entire tree out using phi. Like it was like pretty spot on within like a couple like millionths of a decimal point or whatever it was. So then once they finished that, they started going, okay, well, how does this tree sit in the relation of the forest? So they started measuring other trees of that same species. And it actually was started to grow out in the Fibonacci spiral. <laughs> How fucking crazy is that? Like well, you know, man. So like, it's it's not just a single organism; it's everything oh, in relation to everything. Okay. All right. So what'd you find? Uh, all right. So all I did was Google DNA phi ratio, and the perfect kind of thing came up. Okay. So it's a picture of. DNA going up and down. So if we can get an example, okay, so it was basically the way DNA works is if you took a ladder that has all the rungs on it in the middle and then took the bottom and the top and twisted the ladder opposite ways to spiral it out, that's, that's basically what your DNA looks like. But when you twist it out like that, the distance between... Um, where the where the rungs are connecting the you know the longer pieces is going to be slightly shorter than the distance between from the outside does that make sense so like when the pole perfect perfect you got it on screen bring it up i love looking at me they love looking at me but put it on for yeah. them where'd it go that oh. that's perfect that's perfect right yeah. there yep because it, see that's that's the phi ratio right yep. there. So this is from uh, goldennumber.net. And you, you now you can sort of see what I'm saying is that where the rungs exist. Uh, so you're talking is, about these right here. Yeah, but if you try to like um, look at it cohesively, like as it spirals, you see how these two thicker like strands are closer together than you say the third one up. Yep. That's talk what about I'm the space here, so yeah. That is where the that's where it exists, um, but also <clears throat> that's visually where you can see that it exists. But it says the DNA molecule the program for all life is based on the golden section. It measures thirty four angstroms long by twenty one angstroms wide for each full cycle of its double helix spiral. Thirty four and twenty one, of course, are numbers in the Fibonacci series and their ratio. 1.1 1. 1.6190476 which closely approximates phi 1.6180339 yeah for, so if anyone that actually wants to prove it i just did it right there so 34 divided by 21 1. 1.619 so it's pretty much like i said off by what that's a thousandth yeah it, it's it's barely off it's as close it's pretty much as close as it can be right <laughs> without being it um, so yeah, again, sacred geometry within literally our DNA. <laughs> it's that's and this this is amazing like stuff. It's like, absolutely amazing. And when I when I first found out about like the Fibonacci sequence and, and the golden ratio and things like that and just seen it in nature and like you just you just keep looking for it and it just keeps showing up. Yep. Everywhere. Like it's literally everywhere. We're made of platonic solids in the instruction of the golden ratio and how we all figured this out and no one knows about it is crazy because 
it's there, and people just kind of pass it off. Like, okay. <laughs> See, I, I've always wanted this too. So, if phi is technically the perfect ratio, right? And this kind of goes back to where we how we started the show with these devices that can shoot off into space at fast speeds if you were to build like an engine so en engines have compression ratios and i don't really understand how compression ratios work i understand how it's the mixture between the fuel and the air and has to be the right size or whatever but if you had some type of fuel that could be compressed into the phi ratio so that one to 1.618 what would the results of that be like could you get something that limitless fuel yeah like you know what i'm saying like could that be like a magic number? Because I've always wanted that as a kid was like if, if you know, trying to escape, you know, the the pull of I think anything's gravity. possible, first of all. Like, could you try to mimic nature in the sense of in modern machinery? Well, I think that, yeah. Well, yeah, I think we're already kind of doing that. Like, I think solar energy or, like, wind energy, like, natural energy like that, that's... That's kind of in that ballpark because you're taking something from somewhere and using it to put out something more. Right, but which that is would then be like back in. But that'd be like so, like say, for like wind energy, right? So it has a turbine which is connected to some type of transmission to generate uh, electricity. Um, what if the gear ratio was the one point six one eight? Like, would it be more efficient than a gear ratio of like a two point five? And obviously not, because we could do the mathematics of it. And the higher the gear ratio, the faster the electricity part would spin because you don't need as much power but i don't know maybe if you went the other way around like and there's engineers that are way smarter than me and i might be talking on my ass here but oh yeah totally <laughs> i'm almost always talking about my ass but I, I that's what i've always wondered is like how come we can't use the phi ratio in machinery because most of the stuff maybe that we it's have not a matter of why can't we? Maybe it's more. Or well, why don't why we? Why aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. So like, like what is and, a, what's a TV like a sixteen by nine? Remember, like we just said, dude, nothing is coincidence. Right. I don't think it's coincidence that we don't use anything in the fire ratio. I think it's perfectly intentional. What are you waiting for, dude? Why don't you make something in the fire ratio? <laughs> I have to help. Yeah, I'm gonna make a. Uh, engine and launch my forget an engine think on a smaller space. scale yeah, technically so, well art like technically you do like painting and things like that no but something your computer i don't know do something i mean you're a computer guy yeah i think you should experiment with this i think you should try to build something that could benefit from the mathematical structure of a ratio like that and just implement the fire ratio into it That'd be cool. Like, well, so for those people that are interested in hearing something like something like that, so like Lateralis by from um, Tool, uh, he sings in the Fibonacci sequence. So his verses or his lyrics will go. The the song will start with no lyrics, so zero. Then he has a single word, and then goes on again to the single word, and then goes on to two words, and then it goes on to the three words, and then the five, and then the thirteen. So he actually builds upon it, but then he goes back down to zero again. And it's a pretty interesting song, and I would suggest if you do listen to it, pull up the lyrics online so you can kind of follow along, and then you'll see how it's laid out. It's a pretty cool song, too. I'm a fan of Tool. Um, they have a new album coming out pretty soon. I'm super excited about it because they, they think like we think, and they put the time and the effort into songs like that. I did not know that. Yeah. So I mean, I knew that I knew that the at least the singer was like into all that stuff. Yeah. But I didn't know that he like made his lyrics in the fire ratio or anything. Yeah. Like, what yeah. The fuck? <laughs> like, That's cool, right? Yeah, it's cool. That's cool. Why didn't your band do that? Because we weren't into all this stuff at the time. <laughs> we were just into being mad. <laughs> being mad yeah, being angry. Ah. So that kind of brings me to a point, though. Like we're in that song, it goes from I don't know what it, it goes. I think it goes from zero all the way up to thirteen using the Fibonacci sequence, and then back down to zero. And that kind of brings me to the point of this next slide right here: as above, so below. And it works. Like this has been in 
you know, mythology and, and scriptures and everything throughout history. Like, this is not a new phrase that somebody's come up with just now. Like, it's been it's been here for, you know, as long as it's... Millennium. Yeah, yeah. we had language, right? And that refers to a lot of things, right? So that could be, like, the heavens, you know, is there's good, there's bad. Or the heaven, there's Do hell. on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> right. So... But it also works with the Fibonacci sequence because you can infinitely go positive, you can infinitely go negative. If you, if you add the negative numbers, you know, in the other direction, if you start at zero and you go negative one and you keep going all the way, it's the negative version of the Fibonacci sequence, right? Same thing with five. Five, the ratio can keep going infinite up, it can infinitely go down. We see that with, you know, the something the size of like a galaxy all the way down to a cell, a single cell. And with everything kind of built into itself, the best representation we have nowadays, where we actually just formulated this back in like the, the late 70s, or early 80s, is something called fractals. Now we're getting into the fractals. Now we're getting into the fractals. We had a little f foreshadowing before. Now, come on. Now, before we get too, too into it, what do all those ridges and edges look like? Snowflake. Absolutely. Snowflake, snowflake, snowflake. snowflake. <laughs> and a snowflake is, because remember I, remember I mentioned before, um, the molecule of a frozen water, so the crystalline molecule of water, meaning ice, is in the form of a snowflake, right? But when you have a snowflake itself, so frozen water, it's in the shape of its own self. It's as above, so below. You can continuously go into infinity with it, just like what a fractal is. So if you notice that, it looks like we're zooming in on you know part of it, but it just keeps continuously going. You don't ever see a break in it. What's actually happening is we're continuously zooming. It doesn't reset. It's continuously zooming smaller and smaller and smaller, or larger and larger and larger. However, you want to see it as but above, the so formula below. Formula that's been implemented into this pattern, which is the phi ratio. Phi ratio, yeah. It creates a never-ending pattern. And it's smooth. Like, yep. This is this is just a gif. There's this never is never a break in it. This is just a gif of these are just frames repeating, constantly, and there's no hiccup whatsoever right and if you take Guys. take watch any point take any point of it and continuously follow it with your eyes and you'll see it never changes yeah it never gets bigger so it's in well, i mean it does but it's not until we actually had powerful enough computers to compute graphs and lines in the phi ratio that we got to this and this is kind of what we were saying before is you know, using the platonic shapes, using phi of the Fibonacci sequence, and using the power of computers through silicon crystals, could we make artificial beings that are conscious? Why couldn't we? It's pretty damn close to nature itself. And then I want to tie this all back into the very first that, thing guys. we talked just about. Just look at that and think about <laughs> how that is never ending. It just keeps going and going and going. This is a simulation we created as people. This is a GIF, whatever video, whatever you want to call it. We created as humans. And this is from uh, fractal.co. That is not. That has to be profound to you. It has to be. Like if we can just create that. And it, and it becomes infinitely large. You can zoom in or zoom out infinitely, and it stays the same. Never, the yeah, it never time. ends. Never ends. And you can zoom in on any point. Yeah. So, like, if you look at it. It's zooming in on a specific point it's on this. On this, yes. But you can take any point within itself in its exact same shape. So, and that's the definition of a fractal is any point or any, any small, minuscule bump you see, if you zoom into that enough, you'll see this shape. Absolute craziness. Over and over and over again, and it's as above, so below. But, like, think about this. Like, you took, you take the uh, the flower of life, right? Or, like, just a couple of spheres, add a couple more spheres to it. It's still a sphere, right? And you keep going, you keep adding to it, you keep adding to it, it still fits within the sphere. Yep. And you keep adding to it, it's as above, so below. It's a fractal within itself. It doesn't matter what you add to it. The entire universe is a fractal within itself. <laughs> we're like stuck staring at this thing right now yeah it's amazing you, i could watch it forever it really is and like there's there's some cool like um there's some cool videos you can get out there uh or even just gifts and just throw them on and just just check it out like 
what the fractals do is it, it gives you a sense of how how neat it is. And there's a couple websites out there too, and I and I might link in the show notes that you can actually you can control it so you can zoom in when using your mouse wheel. So you can actually pick a point on it, zoom in. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's cool. So like when you start doing that, I you, recommend doing you understand. That, yeah. yeah, you understand like okay, this is infinite. Like no matter where I click on, and you know what's actually kind of cool about fractals too, is if you take a coastline, meaning like let's take like uh, let's like a famous island. Um, let's just like UK, Hawaii. like or Hawaii, right, or whatever. If you take a coastline and you try to draw it as clean as possible, like let's say you're drawing a map, and you try to draw it as clean as possible, right? For time's sake, you're going to have a measurement pretty large, so maybe you're doing it in meters, right? Maybe every angle is a meter, or maybe every angle is 10 meters, right? But let's say you want it to be so defined that you want it down to the nanometer, right? You will actually end up drawing roughly the same shape as you would at a 10 meter level. So coastlines are actually fractals of itself yeah so the, the 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 smaller you go trying to draw the coastline it becomes essentially the exact same but the closer you get to phi too so like the entire planet is on phi like like Everything ocean is erosion there. is on phi somehow like how because the island is created and technically it's being washed away by the ocean a little bit at a time but it's washing away in a phi ratio <laughs> so somehow the ocean's controlled by phi as well right or the splash is controlled by phi or it really the, it really feeds oh, the theory of everything being a simulation huh? it really does yeah so like how we use binary ones and zeros I like, might be too far away from the microphone yeah you're probably talking real low Sorry. <laughs> Read that far the whole time? <laughs> no, no, not the whole time. All right. But past, yeah. Past yeah. few minutes. But yeah, it, it does really make you think, like, we are in a simulation where our, where whatever simulation that we're in, the base number is, you know, the phi ratio, or it's based on the the, the fractal of, or the, um, the, the ratio of phi, the golden ratio. The golden mean, the god number. right there yeah it's just again guys not not taught in school ever super super interesting yeah yeah super you're right found i never learned not this in school. taught in school anywhere yet this is something that is everywhere and is again important yeah it really is like think about everything you can do in nature is based on this number or if yeah, we can that's just powerful or if we can hack it we can be like neo if it is a simulation right we have the answer. This is it. It's got to be it. All right, well, you can be the first one to try to jump from one skyscraper to another. Did, um, you, know, did you know Neo is an anagram for the one? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you can be the one. I'm going to throw back up the uh, this fractal. You, you just, yeah, we're going to end with that. Just just stare at it. Just stare. Everyone just stare at it. Smoke it if you got it. And just, and just look at that beautiful thing. Tell you what, when I die, everyone's just gonna sit and watch a fractal for two hours. It's gonna be a fractal of my face though. <laughs> and it's like I'm just go, constantly going in. Oh and my god. <laughs> Actually I think you could do that with like mosaics, right? <laughs>